Hi, welcome back to our series of tutorials in beginning to develop your own Game Boy games in C using the Game Boy Developer Kit. If you've been following along, then last tutorial I showed you how to make a splash screen for your game. This tutorial I'm going to show you how to fade between splash screens, like in my game here, where we fade between the Gaming Monsters screen and Dino's Offline Adventures start screen. It's relatively straightforward, so we'll just get stuck into the code and show you how it works. This time we're starting with some code from our last tutorial where we showed you how to load a splash screen. So just to quickly run over that, but go and see that last tutorial for the details. We load in some Mario sprite data, which is a background image of Mario and a map for it. We set the background data with 114 sprites from Mario data, and then we draw the tiles from 00 to 2018, which is the full size of the Game Boy's background using the Mario map. We turn the background on, we turn the display on, and we wait for the user to press start. So if we actually look what that looks like, basically it looks like this. We just have Mario displaying in the middle there, um, and it doesn't do anything at the moment until we're gonna write some code today. So what we're gonna show you is how you can fade using the Game Boy. If you've ever used anything like Unity or a modern game development system, then fading would be a really simple thing. You would just kind of make the colors more and more transparent or brighter and brighter in steps. But don't forget the Game Boy only has four colors. It can only actually display four colors on its screen. So we can't to kind of do transparencies or anything like that. So actually what we're going to do is we're going to change the color palette so that it gets darker and darker and then lighter and lighter again when we fade in. So before we get stuck into the code, I'm just gonna to explain to you how this actually works. So as I've said before, the Game Boy only has four colors in its palette. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the palette that the Game Boy uses, slowly turning each of the colors to be black, and that's how it can fade out. So the way we're gonna do that is there's a special memory register, which is basically just an address in the Game Boy memory, and we're gonna set a value in that. So the register enter we're gonna change is BGP underscore reg, which is what I've got written over here. So that's the background palette register. And that has four colors in it, as you can see here. It's got color one, two, three, and four. And by default, color one is set to zero and zero, which is white. Zero, one, which is light gray, is two. Three is dark gray, and four is black. And if you take that binary number, one 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 zero zero one zero zero convert into a hexadecimal number you can just go and google binary to hexadecimal converter and take that number and set the bgp reg to it then that will set it to the default palette but what we're going to do is each step of our fade we're going to shift those colors down so the next step is going to do this it's going to make white be light gray it's going to make light gray be dark gray it's going to make dark gray be black, and we've still got black before. And that number, if you convert the binary number into hexadecimal, is F9. Now we'll carry on for the next one. So now three of them are black, and this one's dark gray, and the very last one where they're all black. And this effect basically is gonna make it look like it's fading. And you could fade back again by just reversing that kind of process. So let's go and have a look at the code. Like I said, we're starting from the code from the last time. We've already seen what that displays, just a Mario image like this. Now we're gonna write some code to actually fade it out. We're gonna take something that we have used in a lot of our videos first and just paste it in. So we're gonna need a delay and rather than using the built-in delay, which kind of maxes the CPU out, we're gonna use a performant delay. I've used this in previous tutorials, go and have a look um, if you've ever seen it before. So I'm gonna bring that in. And we're gonna write a new function, which is void because it doesn't return anything, will it fade out? We're not passing anything into it because it's just gonna know to fade out the background. And what we're gonna do is gonna loop through um, those kind of four steps that I showed you on those on that slide. So we're gonna do four i equals zero to so i is less than four i plus plus. So a standard for loop that you've seen us do before. Uh, we don't have i yet. I could declare it like this one um, inside this fade out, but we're gonna use it again in fade in. And if you can on the Game Boy, because it's so limited in memory, to, if you can reuse your variables, it's a good idea to do that. So I'm gonna do a uint8 i here, and we'll use it in fade in and fade out. So that's our loop. Each time it comes into the loop, we want it to do something different. So we're gonna use a switch statement. It's like a clever if statement. So we're gonna say, I want you to look at i and compare it 
to what I'm going to put here. So you switch statements use something called a case. So you write switch, the thing that you want to look at, and then you write a case. So when i is zero, I want you to do this. So we're going to set that register we talked about. So bgp underscore reg. We're going to set that to the hexadecimal value. E4, 0x just means it's hexadecimal value. And then at the end of each bit of code for a case statement, you need to write break, which will take you outside the switch down to here and continue your code on. Because you only want to just do one of these things depending on what i is. So when it's 1, you're going to do the same thing, but set it to the next number, so F9. When it's 2, we're going to set it to FE. And then finally, I've missed out break here. Finally, we're going to set them all black, which is FF. And do a break. Okay, so that will set that palette each time. And then all we need to do is put a little bit of a delay in. So we're going to use the performant delay. And we're going to set it to something so we can actually see what's going on. We're going to set it to 100 so it's quite slow. So we can really see this taking effect. So one thing to note is that our performant delay uses this method called wait VBL done. Um, if we were using the built-in delay, I would actually put wait VBL done at the end here so that we were waiting for the screen to finish drawing before we went on to the next one um, but because that's what our performance delay does we'll just leave it up there so we've actually got fade out now we could have a look and see what that does so we're going to call fade out after they press start okay so if we compile that there's mario if i press start You'll see it step by step getting darker, 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 and down to black. So that's great, but usually you're then going to want to fade back in, because if I try to display anything now, all the colours would be black. So we have to write another method called fade in. So we're just going to copy fade out. We're going to alter it very slightly. So fade in doesn't need to go through four colour changes, because fade out has already made it go to here and it started at the default palette so we're just going to move it up back to the default palette so we're just going to do 0 to 3 and then we're going to flip these round so this is going to start with FE then it's going to be F9 again because that's in the middle then it's going to be back to the default which is E4 so that will set it back to the default Game Boy palette and we're going to call that fade in So now if we did fade in, it would just fade straight back in again, but that would just go straight back to Mario. So, so that we can actually see it kind of switch between two screens, I'm going to take some code that we've previously used again. We're going to take the background that we used in the background collision data. So I've already got that in here as maze map. So if we just include the maze sprites and the maze map at the top here, just like we normally do. And then we're going to load that in as a background and replace Mario in the background in between our fade. So we'll fade out, then we'll change it, and then we'll fade in. So we're setting the background data to be the maze sprites again, and then we're setting the background tiles to use our maze map. So if we compile that and load it up, now when we press start, it will fade to black. And then it will fade back out to our maze. So obviously I've left it with a really big delay just so you can see what's going on. But if we change that to a more sensible delay, you can see what it would look like really in your game. If we press start, there you go. Let's look at it once more.
So that's a really easy code for doing that. You can reuse these functions or you can write them yourself, which would be good to understand what's going on. What would be a good challenge is actually to get it to fade from a different color. So you could actually, rather than going all to black, you could take them all to white, and then it would kind of fade to white and then fade back in again. I've actually tried that and it sometimes doesn't look as good as fading to black, strangely, but have a go, see what works for your games. Different games use different things. So that's all for this tutorial. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button, the like button, make sure you share it with everyone. It would be great to get more and more people writing Game Boy games. That's all for now. See you later.